Any TCG player will tell you that not all cards are created equal. Some cards are more advantageous or work better with other cards making them valuable. Successful deck building involves selecting the best cards to achieve a winning outcome. You gave me someone else's cards! After all, the last thing we want is a handful of bricks. In deck building, some cards are considered less good or outright bad due to high ability costs, lack of advantage or synchronization with the deck. The cards sit there waiting for someone from Japan to come up with a crazy build. Today we'll talk about how Vanguard Zero has given new life to these cards by reworking their abilities or benefiting from new game mechanics, which allowed these cards to shine. I'm gonna miss a lot of cards, so if I did miss your favorite card, please let me know. I promise I won't cry too much when reading, I can also be wrong. So there's that. Let's begin with the card who inspired me to make this video. Harmonix Messiah. Harmonix Messiah is literally a hype card to introduce striding after Legion Mate. The only thing it really boasts is a 16,000 base power, which is about as exciting as watching paint dry, or me work. But here's the thing. In Vanguard Zero, this bad boy is the poster boy of minimizing ability exploitation. Locks are running rampant? No biggie. Harmonix Messiah has an unlock ability that'll make Houdini jealous. Zero damage players? Not on his watch. He'll gladly hand out some damage to even the playing field. And don't even get me started on those poor first turn players. Harmonix Messiah will give them a heal guard for free and from outside the deck. Not to mention it was given for free. Thanks to the power of patches and updates, this filler G unit from the TCG became a staple in Zero. Who knows? Maybe in the next game update they'll give him the power to make you breakfast too. The Witching Hour series is composed of the Grade 1 Bike, Grade 2 Carriage, and Grade 3 Chariot. In the TCG, they absolutely suck. They only get additional power for each copy in the soul, and to get one at full power, you'll need three copies, which makes them pretty much a one-time use card. They become dead if you damage check them or they've been retired. However, in Vanguard Zero, these meme cards weren't only reborn, they were jacked. When placed, they can produce a copy of themselves back to the deck, which not only gives them more consistency, it also prevents you from decking out from your big-ass soul charging. Chariot is the best of the series because it creates one of each member of the series. Since Vanguard Zero lets you assign triggers to Grade Threes, you can have more than four heals and virtually return the heal card that you drew. To top it off, they also gain critical if there are three copies. The Witching Hour series are literally a nightmare when played with Bladewing Ragey. They will stun lock you to three damage until you exhaust your PG and you eventually take the attack and lose. The combo was so damn scary that they forced a Bladewing Ragey nerf. Even now they still see some play. Sanctuary of Light was like the kid in school who never quite fit in with the cool kids. And the cool kids were the Jewel Knights. Everyone was all hyped up about Ashley Reverse, for good reason. It's simply because Ashley and her support are really, really good. Compared to the Jewel Knights, Sanctuary of Light series were pretty lackluster. It didn't help that they're not waifu material. But in Vanguard Zero, this little engine became an absolute powerhouse. This kid who didn't fit in returned with a vengeance and six-pack abs. In the tournaments, it took on the overpowered immortal Mon Blaukluger deck head-on and made it its bitch. One of the first videos of this channel is how Sanctuary of Light toppled Immortal Mond on the high stage. Unfortunately, it fell victim to power creep and faded into obscurity. But for a brief moment in time, it was a true champion who made the gods bleed. It was good while it lasted. Galahad, the second generation ride chain, like Tsukuyomi. It offered some consistency but lacked the it factor Tsukuyomi had. In the TCG, the Grade 3 Galahad only added an extra critical, which was about as threatening as a plastic hammer. You can easily block it. Some decks only use the Galahad chain until Grade 2 to make riding free. Unfortunately, despite having similarities, Galahad wasn't supported like Tsukuyomi, and it easily got power crept. But in Zero, Galahad became one of the MVPs of VP farming, along with Tsukuyomi, of course. Back in the day, it was raining free packs and gems. Anyone with a macro could strike it rich and reach Legend 100 while sleeping. Galahad and Tsukuyomi were the perfect decks to exploit this. 
and VP farming got so bad that the game developers had to put a cap on VP and change the way it is earned. Even I farmed VP. It was a decision I came to regret for the longer term because it literally killed my phone. While the VP farmers have drastically decreased since then, there are still a few today because 500 VP is better than zero. Pulsar Tamer, Napata, and to an extent Edge in the Darkness were just okay tech options who didn't offer a lot. To be really honest, I haven't seen a lot of them when I was still playing competitively. But in Zero, they suddenly became the MVPs of any deck. Especially Napata, who can be fetched directly from the deck by Time Leap or Split Pegasus. With Zero's mechanics requiring players to get rid of intercepts before attacking the Vanguard, these two troublemakers are the perfect roadblocks to ensure your Vanguard stays safe and sound. If you're fighting them and your deck doesn't have multi-battle nor board control, I'm afraid you'll be at their mercy. Napata and Edge in the darkness are big, beautiful walls Donald Trump could ever dream of. Speaking of intercept, let's talk about Desert Gunner Sheedon. He removes the intercept of one rear guard. End of speech. In the TCG, Sheedon was a bit underwhelming. Primary reason is in the TCG, you can attack the Vanguard directly. He is maximized only when you are stopping a special intercepts. Sure, he has his functions and timely uses, but he was kind of pricey as a triple R and became obsolete pretty quickly. However, in Vanguard Zero, he and Rayan have seen a lot of play. Intercepts matter a lot in Zero, so removing them simply allows you to swing at the Vanguard more times, especially during Vanquisher Voltage turn. You'll want at least three full swings, which is still extendable if you have Descendant Sigma in order to clinch the game. I still use them until now. It's amazing how the digital realm of Vanguard Zero has breathed new life into cards that were usually left in the stash. The unique mechanics and gameplay of Zero have given these overlooked cards a chance to shine and even dominate the meta. It just goes to show that sometimes a change in perspective, environment, and code, especially code, can make all the difference. I hope you enjoyed the content of this video. I've always wanted to try making this type of content inspired by the likes of the dual logs and TGS anime. If you want more of these videos, please let me know. Suggest topics as you wish and we'll see what we can do. I sincerely apologize that I have to use an AI to have this video narrated for me. I paid to use this service, so of course I will maximize it. Smiley face. As you may know, I am not a native speaker and among other things, I do not have confidence in creating video essays. If you only knew how much time I spend recording retro time, you'd probably look for other options to deliver content quicker. But then again, your feedback matters, so if you do not like me using an AI narrator in the long term, let me know. Thank you very much for watching. I wish you well.